I'm looking forward to talking to you about this one, Ben, because I have a feeling there's some different things that kind of niggle on both of us. But specifically, I'd love to know what your thoughts are on the Forge at the beginning. I'm a, a, I'm a no and a yes. I'm trying to find okay. the best way to, to come at this. Russ, I'm more no than I am yes. And yeah, there are some niggles. It'd be get, good to get into that. I should confess up front, I've not actually seen a Kendrick Brothers film. So this is my introduction right. to the Kendrick Brothers. And it was pretty much what I expected from the film. So... I'm a no and a yes. What about you? I would probably lean more to the yes, but I think that this is more for your Christian audience with the potential of having somebody you could invite along to come this, but this is really for your churches, I feel, even though it is a good quality film within the genre. So you do think you could invite your mates along, including your mates who don't necessarily follow Jesus? Because th that was a reservation that I had watching the film. I'm not sure I would actually look to do that. I think the film is much more squarely directed at people who do follow Jesus and and the yes in my what I liked about The Forge is what you've already pointed out. Is a, It's a film that hand on heart explicitly is about discipleship and mentoring in the faith, particularly on this occasion, older men towards younger men. That's a fantastic thing. And I don't think I've ever seen a movie about that. So like, that's great. Right. However, I found apart from the message itself that it's broadcasting, the way it's communicating that I thought was problematic, which goes back to why I would not be likely to share this with a friend who doesn't yet know Jesus. That's a great point. And I, I want to kind of tease out some of those things real quick from you as far as kind of sharing that. If I look back at like the last four films that we've gone, done here on the watch list, look at the messaging of those films, and I kind of go, uh, well, that's actually not what I would necessarily want to say. I'd want to exemplify, or even the men that are in it would want to exemplify. While oh, one... you don't think you'd be going out to bat for Deadpool and Wolverine and <laughs> what it's saying about bromances, exactly. <laughs> Russ, let alone other things? Exactly. If you're putting it up against what is out on the market currently. I think that this one definitely has a stronger message and definitely one that would really probably represent what we would probably say within the Christian realm is a, is a very positive message. There are some issues and I have a feeling some of it's cultural while some of it is kind of what they're really trying to do. I think that's one of the biggest struggles I've always had with most of Christian films is they try to do too much. They try to do everything in one film opposed to just kind of focusing on one thing. So this one kind of goes a bit far. Also the fact that, oh, do we all get Mustangs when we become Christians over in the States? I don't think so. I'm <laughs> so very glad kind of you raised that. And I'm trying not to talk about this movie, Russ, with spoilers, but I do want to ask you about, is this an Australian thing versus an American thing? Not not just the, the Ford Mustang that, that features reasonably prominently in the film, but even the setup of Isaiah, or sorry, Isaiah, as he's known in the as he's known in the film, Isaiah. Even how Isaiah meets Joshua Moore, who runs the Moore Fitness Company, where Isaiah ends up getting a job. The way that that unfolds, and then the relationship that they have, which is an explicitly mentor-mentee relationship from the kickoff. But what I was quite confused by, and almost a little bit unsettled by, is this is a boss in a workplace who is effectively evangelizing to his employee. And here in Australia, like that instantly sets off alarm bells, including for someone who's a Christian, like the power dynamics and the words thrown around like coercion, like there's just the setup alone, right. I found problematic where the forge could have been set up in a slightly different way, such as a colleague who is explicitly Christian, who is wise and experienced and got their life together, Isaiah could have just reached out to him or the other way around at work and it could have progressed in a right. similar way to the way Joshua and Isaiah does. And it doesn't have some of the power dynamics and complications of the Kendrick brothers own making because of the way that they've set up the storyline. And that is just for me one example mm of some of the problematic handling of this discipleship mentoring relationship that we see in The Forge. Could it happen? Definitely. Does it happen? Yes. Um, and so I don't think that it's something that doesn't happen. And I think that there are, I mean, it, uh, if you do find that really in so many of the scenarios and situations, he did still put himself in a situation as far as it's in the workplace, it was in an atmosphere, or even when they went and did the volunteering, you know, there's some different things that maybe could be inter interpreted as, as problematic. 
Uh, fortunately, it didn't present that way in the film, and so uh, which it was never likely to, though, Russ. And again, not trying to give spoilers, but the, the sort of film this is, and who it's pitched at, and what it's about. Like there is so much about this film that it was never going to go in the more negative way no. of which I was describing. That in real life, I think could actually happen. One of the issues that I had, Russ, is as the script unfolds, as the story unfolds, yep. it was all a bit too neat for me, Russ. <laughs> I, knew, and it, it, I knew this would be. It struck me. Yeah. yeah, and I really want to know what you think of this because I'm watching it thinking to me this strikes me as wish fulfillment for Christians. This is like best case scenario it is. for evangelism, which which I imagine does actually happen, Russ. God can do anything. God can do the impossible. Watching this film struck me as this is like God doing the impossible. Yeah. But I was thinking, can I really directly apply this in real life, Russ, it, from a movie that is encouraging me, especially as a man, to share my faith and mentor and disciple other men. That's a great message. But watching this film, can I really, really come from this and think I could do something similar? And would I therefore expect similar results? I mean, but I, I guess it, it is still a film, you know, and so you're still looking at, you know, it's no different than why we embrace superhero films and why we look at all these other things that are all, all relatively unrealistic in so many ways. And so within this, I think that there were some definitely some different struggles, some different challenges that they see. I don't think that, yes, it is the perfect, it is like that perfect scenario as far as kind of moving him through and moving it through this whole process. So yeah, it is ideal world. Would I invite all of my mates to this? I'm not sure. I definitely wouldn't have a problem at all inviting my church to come along to this and be able to see it. Again, it's a safe film. That's that's when I'd be able to say that it's not a, a film that anyone was going to be really offended by. But, um, but I think that it's worthwhile kind of talking with people afterwards going, yeah, maybe this is ideal ideal world but yet i think that there are some really great lessons we could take from the forge and be able to see how we can move forward on discipleship and mentorship